back in 1996, kind of like it, I really, really do. 15 after 11 o'clock, 13 degrees downtown. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, we have passed the uh, weatherman's 14 degrees and closest to my prediction of 19 this morning. So far, Barbara 20, she's not going to get a, no, she's not going to win today. Absolutely not. Write that one off. Uh, but in the meantime, nice to have everybody along this morning today. We're actually doing a redo because the last time we did this, uh, unfortunately, Microsoft and Facebook and all of those had a global incident which sort of, you know, it impeded us a little bit. So we want the whole enchilada. Let's do it properly. Besides that, we got inundated by fans saying, where is the video? We want to see the interview. So, okay, let's do this for you guys. So, welcome along if you're joining us on Facebook Live right now. Uh, nice to have everybody along and believe me, it is an absolute pleasure to have Corey Luchin join us again with the Travelling Blues Band. And today he's brought along uh, a good friend of his, the saxophone player, Jonathan Link. And uh, nice to have Jonathan in on this as well. Uh, he's going to learn a few things about me. He really is. So this might be... He may need a therapist after it. Don't worry, Jonathan. I've got a good one. You know, or a good couple, actually. One coming out of your area, too. Uh, well, he's a criminologist as well. So uh, you may know him, by the way. Uh, but in the meantime, let's kick this off. Let me do this. Galaxy. Sean Simpson's on board. Nice to have you on board, Sean. Absolutely love, love, love our fans and thank you so much for being a dedicated fan to Galaxy and watching these interviews today. I am absolutely elated because we do have Corey Luchin and the Travelling Blues Band joining us coming out of North Carolina. I think we're uh, almost residents in North Carolina now. We really, really are. And again, <laughs> we have a good friend of ours. So let's kick it off. Let's go the way... You move right here at Galaxy. So how are you feeling, guys? You okay? Uh, yeah, doing good. We're going to try to jump on that link and try to get that streaming live on our channel too, if we can. While, while we got the little minute, give me. A, let us know when we're about to interview back on, and we'll be good to go and do it. Thank you for the introduction. Once again, man, seriously, thanks again for having us. I, we'll obviously say all this stuff to you on there, but really, I really appreciate you doing it. We, oh. uh, we cannot thank you enough. We really do, man. We're very humbled and very glad about the support. Believe me, bro, not a problem. It's an absolute pleasure. As I said to you the last time, we only play the good stuff here at Galaxy, so, uh, <laughs> and, and I'm honestly a stickler for uh, getting it right. Now, if we can't get it right first time, Dan, we're going to make sure we get it right the second time because it's about you, it's about your music, your songwriting, all, all the abilities and stuff. Terry Van Cannon's on board. Nice to have Terry on board. Um, glad Corey got connected. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, yeah, we did it once before, Terry, but unfortunately Microsoft yeah, but, and Facebook yeah. let us down. So, we did broadcast um, it on the radio. There is a reason for doing this, and, and I'm so elated that Terry actually took the time out not only to come on back, uh, but he brought Jonathan with him this time. Uh, always good for a good blower. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, dear, dear, dear. Um, so, we will uh, have a chat about... Uh, I'm not sure, did we talk the last time, Corey, about getting you guys down to New Zealand? I would, I would love to get there. We haven't. We, if not, we haven't talked enough. We've got to line up a promoter or the right, the right amount of clubs to make that happen. We, we will um, have a chat about that. Of course, we're subject to the government's uh, rules right now, if you know what I mean. We've been... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Locked um, down for yeah, it's 16, crazy. 17 months. 17 now. months that we haven't had a show in this country ourselves. And that's... Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah, uh -huh. that, I, I I feel for you. Live music, I don't know if I can live without it. I, you know, so I can well, only imagine. Well, believe me, bro, not only is it about us uh, trying to get shows on, but we have people to worry about as well, like uh, all of our staff and that have families and need to be able to pay the rent and mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff like that, you know what I mean? Oh, this... oh, 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 absolutely. From from the bartender to the guy running the lights to the guy selling the tickets to the toll booth guy you got to pay to get it. it all, it's all affected. 
it's all effective with entertainment. And, absolutely. And, and shows and music. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, bro. Yeah, yeah. People, 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 the restaurants around the venue, that you know, get dinner crowd before they go to the show, all those things. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Hopefully, onward and upward to happier times. Well, oh, it's, yeah. it's going to happen. Apparently, there was a COVID virus outbreak 20,000 years ago. No kidding. No kidding. Now, how the hell did we get through it that time? And why can't we do it now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just go live, right? Ready? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, 21 after 11 o'clock, it is 13 degrees downtown, 83.4 degrees if you're in America, inside this office right now, it's hot, really hot, uh, so we need to employ some of this Kiwi air conditioning, open the damn window, will you? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yes, I was just saying to, uh, and believe me, it is an absolute pleasure to have guys from the North Carolina state again. Yes, Corey Luchin and the Travelling Blues Band is joining us. And uh, I was just saying to them about uh, the uh, scientists have found out that 20,000 years ago, the COVID virus existed back then. Uh, I asked my mum about it. She says, yes, I remember it like it was yesterday. So I get it. I do. <laughs> Believe me, uh, there's a place here in New Zealand called Milford Sound. It's like time forgot. Literally, it is absolutely fantastic. It's almost like having the dinosaurs walk through there, but Mum went home last week. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Luchin, and of course, we're joined by Jonathan Link from the band. Corey Luchin and the Travelling Blues Band this morning. Welcome to Galaxy. Hey, thank you so much for having us. We sure appreciate you having us on, and we're, we're glad to be here. It is an absolute pleasure to have you back. Now, uh, unfortunately, circumstances kind of got in the way the last time we caught up with Corey, uh, but we're putting that one right as we speak. And uh, I was just saying to Jonathan, you know, you may need a uh, therapist after this. I know you've got a stiff drink there. That's the first good move, uh, but believe me, <laughs> I, I, do have, I do have a therapist. Cheers to you. <laughs> I do have a therapist in your uh, neighbourhood that uh, might be able to help out after this, just in case you need one. Uh, by the way, I, I want to give a shout out too to your uh, uh, to your support team in the background there. Always nice to have a support team working with you. Oh, that, that, that's for sure. And I'll tell you, we actually got a huge support team, uh, starting with, with, I mean, I would say the fans. I, we hate calling them fans because they're almost friends. I swear to God, it's like we just know uh, I mean, at least know your face when you come to a show, but it starts with those guys. You know, they don't come up to shows and do all that good stuff. Uh, there's no band that we don't, we can't get booked. Nobody wants to hear us and nobody's going to book us. But so first of all, the fans and the friends and the people that, that do it, we want to thank them. Then, of course, you got the real second, the, the real support team. That's, of course, family and, and uh, friends that, that have helped us load in and, and uh, load out and get shows and help to buy equipment and all that good stuff throughout the years. And um, the one that we have on detail tonight is, of course, uh, the lovely Faith Wink, Jonathan's wife. She runs Sound Lights for us, and um, she's asked at the, the most spectacular nanny, I guess you could say, in the whole <laughs> wide world. Uh, being a single dad, it's definitely a tough, a tough little job to, to be able to uh, play music for a living and have a, a little one-year-old uh, daughter. But luckily, through family and friends and, and faith, um, uh, li literally faith and literally faith, you know, uh, spiritually and literally uh, we're able to make it do it. So if anybody here is a little uh, kid in the background, a little crowd in the background, it's just Emma and, and, and Faith will be sure to grab her. So we couldn't do it without her. We couldn't do anything without her, I don't think. So, yeah. and, absolutely. And uh, nice to give Faith a plug as well. Very, very cool. Uh, now, guys, we kicked the show well, you off. Know, there, 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 there is one thing, DJ Grant, I, I've always said, too, and, and we can cheers to, to this, I'll tell you, is, is uh, th this whole deal to, to the wives and girlfriends, 
May they never meet. <laughs> Yay, verily. Hey, Dale Hammond is joining us. Nice, I like that. Nice to have you on board, Dale. And <laughs> absolute pleasure. <laughs> really, really. Uh, now, having said that, um, we, we, yes. we kicked the show off with the way you move. Tell me a little bit about this. How did you come to the lyrics of that? Yeah, so uh, we, I was just, um, you know, th there's a lot of my songs, you know, sometimes there's songs that take a year to write and you have, have the right deal. And then sometimes you're really walking through the grocery store and you just get a lyric in your head and you get a melody, and come home, and you write it down and you have it. This was kind of more the latter. Um, we were preparing to go to Memphis. Uh, we had just won uh, the 2017 Piedmont Blues Preservation Society um, competition. And we were getting ready to go to, to, to Memphis. And... Uh, when, when we won our, our, our set in the regional, you know, the, the Piedmont, and we were getting ready to go to Memphis, you know, I just felt like we needed something to really open up the set strong, or strong the, 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 the ability. And I just got in there, and we, we started, I kind of had the kernel, I kind of had that groove, that uh, that Albert Collins kind of shuffle, and Memphis shuffle kind of type thing in my head. But then we wanted to make it pop, and we started just monkeying around with beginnings, and next thing you know, we had that killer intro he you know out of the horns and uh, it just instantly it's it wants to get you on the dance floor it makes you want to move and i think it's an attention getter it's one that we kick off a lot of our shows with you know uh, i never think there's enough brass in bands these days you know what i mean so it's always refreshing to have somebody like jonathan's talents on board with you and i got to congratulate you for that uh now jonathan how long have you been playing the sax uh, probably since I was about 10 years old. I'm on pushing, I'm not going to say, but um, <laughs> we're good, you know, 25 plus years. Okay, well, i got to be honest, I'm a couple of moons older than you, but uh, uh, <laughs> around about the same time I started giving it a blow as well, you know what I mean? So, uh, as I said to you earlier uh, on, much respect for that. Now, having said that, uh, tell me a little bit about Crazy About Saxophone. <laughs> well, that's kind of how it, funny how that actually come up. So when we first started the band, um, we the, the traveling blues and how it all come up. I, I of course got to tell a story by telling a story. Um, we didn't know who the traveling blues band was going to be. I was actually a touring artist. I, I played a, a guitar in a couple other bands, and I could play slide. And I learned actually I was touring for country band. And uh, I got off the road with them, and I just said, man, I want to go play blues. I just I want to go play blues and. I want to do my own band, and I want to have my name on the banner and, and, and do the thing. And so I started putting a band together. The problem was, was because I had been on the road, I would come back home, and I, and I would host some blues jams and whatnot. And that's actually how we met, was through a, a local blues jam. And I knew Jonathan, but but we weren't really playing together. He was he was already playing in three or four other beach bands at the time. He was busy with those guys. But we would meet each other at a jam and do this and that, and then we exchanged numbers. And... Um, Literally, when we first started the band, I was in the first six months of the Travel Blues band. We didn't know if it was going to work, wasn't going to work. I didn't know if I could get booked. Everybody told me I was crazy. I mean, the country is so hot over here in the United States that, it, it, well, around the world, it was just the hottest thing. It's still really hot now. And I was quitting that to go play blues. And everybody just thought I was nuts, you know? And I said, well, I don't care if it's just me and the bartender there. Until they quit hiring me, I'm going to play these three chords and the truth and do it, you know? And, and um, that started it. Well, when I put the band together... It was literally me going through my phone and saying, well, I, here's a good drummer from a jam. This is a good bass player I know. Oh, uh, Jonathan can do this. Uh, I'm sax. I can have a horn in the band. We had a keyboard player. So Thursday night, you might see me with just uh, bass drums, Jonathan and me. Friday night, Jonathan wouldn't be there. There'd be a keyboard player because he'd be playing with a beach band. And Saturday, all of us would be there. And you just never knew. What we did know was you were going to have Corey Luchin, that was me, <laughs> and we knew that there was going to be a traveling blues band. So that's how we started the band, and luckily about six or seven months into it, we really started getting into a groove, and we just, the song selection, and you know, we, it really started going, and um, he kind of started doing it more and more full time. And when he started doing that, I just realized in the set, you know, he would do a solo here, or there'd be a kind of a cool funk one, like Superstition, or something that we'd play in our set. That was good, but there was nothing in the set that showcased him. You know, I wanted to really, not just a solo, but really showcase him. Because uh, he was just such a talented player, and I was so humbled to be able to be able, be able to play with him. And we got, uh, we played a local bar here, 
And I got home on my couch at about 3.30 in the morning. I actually had a, I was, I was a bartender at the time during the day, and I would play music at night. I had a bartender's pad and a pen, and, and I grabbed my guitar, and I sat down, and I said, I'm going to write a saxophone song. And that's how I did Crazy About a Saxophone. Well, we kicked it up in sound check the next show, and, and he started monkeying with it. And next thing you know, it just, man, it clicked, and, and uh, he, he went wild with it ever since, that's for sure. <laughs> And uh, and uh, that, that, that that's my side of the story yeah. and and uh, pretty much how how it went and we just now I will put in a shameless little plug we just completed the music video for that tune and uh, you can check it out on everywhere you go Facebook YouTube check out our page we just completed it um, uh, had a blast doing the video and, and really showcased him so that's what it is and the other thing we know it's our most popular requested song at any show because everybody's crazy about saxophone. That's cool. Now, <laughs> it looks like this, <laughs> somebody bought the security <laughs> Yeah, they do. <laughs> Believe me. Uh, now, <laughs> let's move on there. I'm sorry about that. Somebody with the uh, security yeah, you're fine. Uh, but having said that, uh, Matt Walsh is online, coming out of North Carolina as well. Nice to have you on board. And uh, loving, loving, loving the Friday Night Gambles too, by the way. Here, live at Galaxy, is Corey Luchin and the Travelling Blues Band, Crazy About a Saxophone. <laughs> How are you feeling, guys? You okay? Oh yeah, we're doing great. We're doing great. Good deal. Nice, chime nice. In, chime in, chime in, in the camp. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jonathan, I don't know... Yeah, we do. I, I, I don't know whether I've asked Corey this or not, but... Uh, have you ever tried vegan sausages? <laughs> I, I, I ask everybody. I'm going to say no. Okay, well, yeah, okay, you're a meatatorian like me? Right, right. Right, uh, it's, well, you know, Corey's going to expect this answer, but, well, I just want to find out if they're made out of real vegans. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man, you're killing me. <laughs> hey, that's, uh, that's the good stuff. Right listen, there. the wife actually lets me out every Sunday, every now and again, and I went over to a friend of mine's place, his name is Clinton, and he says to me, I'm a little worried about my mum and dad. And I went, why is that? And he goes, well, the walls here are paper thin, right? And I went, yeah. And he goes, they were out, <laughs> in the, uh, out on the veranda um, having breakfast the other morning, and Mum asked Dad, if I pass away, will you get married again? And of course, Bill says to Marion, I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about that. That's really, really bad. Right? So he says, mm -hmm. the problem is, at night time, my headboard backs onto the wall where their headboard is, so I can hear what they're doing and saying. Just sort of faith going mm. in the background there. Um, and I went, okay. <laughs> yeah. He says, well, the thing is, she asked him again. And he didn't want to talk about it. I went, okay. This morning at breakfast, the question came up again. And the old man just gave up and he says, all right. Yes, I'll get married again. And she goes, oh, okay. Will you sell the house? He goes, no, I'm not going to sell the house. What about my car? No, I'm not going to sell the car. What about my golf clubs? Look, she's left-handed. <laughs> You're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, 26 away from lunchtime, midday here in New Zealand. 8.4 degrees, we'll call it 8 degrees. 
uh, and Tuesday, June 29th, which is basically, you know, Wednesday night in North Carolina right now. And nice to have a good representation coming out of North Carolina watching this right now. And of course, Sean Simpson, love you as well. Really, really do. Now, having said that, guys, as a fan, and I do have a fan question for you, as a fan, how do we get hold of you? Are you on Facebook? Are you on Twitter? Are you on Instagram? But more importantly, do you respond? Uh, yes. So uh, we're on all of the above. Uh, Facebook for sure. Uh, Instagram we respond. Uh, th th those are the, the two main ones that we do a lot with. Uh, I'll, obviously, we're on the Galaxy FM artist page, so you can look us up there. That's always a good idea as well. And, um, uh, you know, the, the cool part about where we are in our careers, I guess, is that, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. Uh, uh, I, I make a living doing this. This is this is, is the day job. This is the night job. This is what I've, we've been, uh, it's, and we work incredibly hard, believe me, to be able to do that and to travel and all that. You know, it, it's not all, 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 the, all the glitz and glamour that, that, that the show lights say, but um, I'm, I still feel incredibly blessed to be able to do this for a living and have fans. With that being said, and being able to make a living doing this, we're still at the level where there's no publicist. You're looking at the guy that does that, that publicist and, and, and does it all. And um, so when you when you message, it, it goes to, to right here on, on, onto this guy. And um, and you, if I'm responding, or Jonathan's responding, or or someone in an immediate team that, that does the deal, is it? So yes, we do respond. We love the fan interaction. We we um, you know. I, 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 we love getting song requests for fans. Hey, we'd love if you, you know, try this one, do that one. Um, obviously, we like getting feedback on our tunes. I mean, it, there's nothing better than when you have a fan come up uh, and, and come up and say that, man, I just absolutely love such and such song. Hey, man, I put your CD in when we drove up to, and yeah, man, we, then we put it back in to drive back. I mean, you know, that those type of things are very encouraging for us. I think every artist, whether it's music, uh, uh, art, just you know, painting, no matter what it is, every artist. You know, you go through like this little cycle of, well, man, it's really good. Let's just put this on CD and go do it. And then you you have the cycle where you're, well, who the heck would listen to this? I, this is, I, you know, what's the deal? You know, so when you actually have somebody that comes up and, and fans and people that, that encourage you and contact with you and engage with you that you realize, it, it, it means a lot. It means a whole lot. So, yes, we are definitely very vocal, very active. Uh, we definitely like to engage with our fan base. And uh, like I was telling you, I even hate calling a fan base because I just, I really, I would drink a beer with just about everybody in, in the audience, you know, and it, and, and just kind of kick back. And that's that's kind of the grassroots uh, following that we have. Absolutely. And I agree with you about calling them fans. Uh, we call them here our audio audience, if you know what I mean, so, because they do participate. Yes. They do get in touch with us. They uh, ring us. They email us. They text us. Believe me, they get in touch mm -hmm. and, and they request well, uh, a, a lot of music. And I'm talking about in the car and uh, having a listen to you on your CD and stuff like that. i got to be honest with you. In fact, I was having a look at this just yesterday. I got in the car, went through my playlist in my car, and it's five, six bands from North Carolina. That's it. It's like, <laughs> how the hell did that happen? You know what I mean? And I'm talking it, about... It, 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 it's got to be something in the water, I guess. I don't know. But there is definitely a lot of talent around here, for sure. And uh, we're, we're blessed to be uh, uh, amongst... I, I think that's kind of part of it um, with here is everybody is it, just so darn good that if you're going to be considered to be one of, one of the good ones and somebody to go see, you really got to constantly stay on top of your game, constantly go out and, 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 and uh, you know, pick up licks and pick up songs and, and, and interact and all that. So that, it's definitely something in the water, and it keeps all the uh, good bands, so to speak, uh, just keep just keeps raising the bar to, to keep on uh, 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 fighting for more and trying to get more and trying to get better and better. Well, let me run down this. Believe me, there's uh, Smitty and the Jump Starters are there. Uh, there's Corey Luchin yeah. is in there. Terry Van Cannon's in there. Dale Cole's in there. Uh, and Matt Walsh is in there. Uh, believe me, that's, yeah. that's my playlist in my car. Now, I've got to let you know, uh, Jonathan, to be able to be played here at Galaxy, to go through and get an interview and everything, that's not easy in its own right. Uh, Barbara gets about 30 to 50 bands a day wanting to do the interviews, yeah, wanting, wanting us to be able to promote them, play them on our radio station, all that sort of stuff. She Now, keeping in mind, we've only got a certain amount of time in a week to be able to get these done. Yeah. 
you know, we've got to whittle that down. And Barbara, you know, she's got to get out the red pen and just go crazy sometimes. Unfortunately, <laughs> there is some very, very good music in there, but it's just got to be done. You know what I mean? And then she goes to production. Yep. Yep. Production and Barbara, they sort of wiggle something out. Then it goes to a board. Now, on the board meetings, any given board meeting could be eight or 12 different people. Their only interest, and I've got to be honest, Jonathan, it's a good interest, is our image. It's got to be good for us. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. we only play the good stuff, literally. And I've got to admit, Corey Luchin is part of that team. You know, that it's being played and requested <laughs> so much. It's not funny. Now, uh, then, then after it passes all of those ticks in the boxes and everything, it comes to me. And Barbara hands it to me on a USB kind of deal. And I play you in my car. Uh, now, for two Ooh, reasons... The car test. That's always the toughest run, test. Right, we right. Might, we've heard that. The car test is yeah. always the toughest test. Yeah, well, uh, for me, it's for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is nobody can influence me on whether or not I want to do the, influ uh, do the interview. Now, I get no information, just the music. Doesn't tell me the title of the song or the artist, anything like that. Uh, so, and, and I've got to kick out a stereo in my car, I've got to be honest with you. <laughs> but the other reason too, Jonathan, is basically this, nobody wants to drive with me. <laughs> it, now, is this on your car or your golf cart? Uh, well, you know, they've heard about the golf cart, but no, in my car, they don't want to get in the car, they don't even want to contemplate the idea. They kind of think sideways is weird, you know what I mean? It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, now, waiting for it, right? Well, you know, uh, I, I dispute this. Even Barbara, now she finds it difficult to get in the car with me at any given time, given that she has in a few times. Uh, but her son drives sideways. He's a New Zealand champion car driver, you know, a racer. Same with her oh. grandson. Well, there we go. You know, she, she'll get in the car any day with those guys. Come to me. See you later. <laughs> What's wrong? Go on sideways. Uh, you know, we kind of, we're in the middle of three major cities, but we're in a little milling town. Soon to be not a milling town, actually. We're uh, closing yeah. down our mill tomorrow. Well, over the next couple of weeks, it's shutting down slowly, losing a, a number of hundreds of people and staff, you know, in employment, which is sad. <laughs> But, you know, sign of the times, unfortunately. But we're covered, we're surrounded by forestry. So I know where they hide the keys and the combinations to get in those fire break gates. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Then I go driving. Now, I've got to be honest with you, um, <laughs> and I will be straight up with you, Corey, about this one. My first song I ever heard of yours was actually Left Me With The Blues, which we do have coming up very mm. shortly. And I literally pulled the car over, turned up the stereo, went back to the start of that song, cracked a cold one, and absolutely just loved it. Okay? So if you want to go cars and memories and music of Corey Luchin, that was my moment when I very first heard you. And there I knew oh. I wanted to do this interview. Having said that, it didn't, it didn't leave me with the same old blues, but I enjoyed that one as well. Tell me about Same Old Blues. All right, Same Old Blues. Um, so th there's a saying I got, I've never been married, but I feel like I've been divorced twice. And um, and that's that's an absolute truth. And this one was, uh, I guess it would have been that first divorce. And um, or it, 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 yeah, I dated a girl for a long time. We lived together, a lot of things, we never did. But uh, it ended up where uh, we split up. And um, here I was, I was in, in my you know, late 20s, early 30s, and um, I went from, you know, having a job, and, and I had a quote-unquote real job. I was a beer, a beer delivery salesman uh, for a company over here, and um, so that was a pretty good day gig, you know, and then I was able to play music at night. Well, I um, I committed a cardinal sin of, of working too much, apparently, and we didn't work out. So with that being said, I... Um, uh, you know, lost a girl, and then I decided, well, then, hell, you know what? I'm actually... I, if I work too much, I'm going to get rid of the day job and just play music. That's what I started doing. And um, I uh, was sitting uh, through all the craziness of it. I ended up having to move back in with, with, with my dad, with my pops. And uh, he had this one 
wooden room. I call it the wooden room. It had wood floors. Old, it has an old farmhouse. And I was sitting. It was literally me, a chair, and and my acoustic guitar. As I was kind of setting up as a practice room. Um, as we were trying to figure out what we we're going to do at the house and all this stuff. And, and I just grabbed my acoustic guitar. And this one literally just poured out of the guitar. The progression did. The, the lyrics. I better wrote the song in about seven minutes. I mean, really, it was it was the life story of that those three years. You know what I mean? And um, I, I came and you know again showed it to the guys. I, I, you know, I really I kind of thought about even doing it acoustic, but um, something about the guitar solo just sounded better on, on electric and being a guitarist. I didn't want to be able to do that, so we compromise and we kick it off slow and then we, we really get going. It's really a heartfelt one and. You know, when I, when I write music, there's, there's fun tunes. Uh, there's, you know, the old saying is, sometimes when you listen to music, it's, it's for the lyrics. And sometimes when you listen to music, it's for the music, you know? And I think it's, it's especially true in blues. You know, I've listened to blues when I was the happiest guy in the world. I just wanted to hear that blues shuffle, and, and I didn't care what the lyrics were saying. I just wanted to hear a cool guitar and, 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 and have that beat. And I've also listened to blues when I've been, I mean, solo a mosquito wouldn't bite me. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just one of those things. And this was definitely the latter. This one was, was, this was a heartfelt deal. And, you know, obviously heartache and heartbreak and people not working out is just part of what happens in the, in the world. And I wanted to be able to write music in this particular song. Somebody could be drinking a beer, drinking a scotch, going through it and listen to it and say, man, that's exactly me that that is what's going on glad somebody else has done it this is my anthem and you know i feel blue this is the blues yep you, know, you know what i am just going to soak in this five minutes of blues and that's what it is and that's why i was bringing you back for the same old blues you're right here at galaxy joined live by Corey lichen and of course jonathan link from the band the traveling blues band same old blues my baby left me Tell me, as an engineer, and believe me, I've been an yep. engineer for almost 40 years, what was the acoustics in that yep. room like? Uh, excellent. I mean, it was all real oak. I mean, it was, when I say it was a farmhouse, I mean, that, that house they did, I mean, it, it's, it, I literally think they cut the trees on the property. You know, back yeah. in those days they did, you know, in the 40s or whatever. It has to be, a, yep. God, that's an old house, really, it's like a downhouse. And I bet they literally cut and milled the trees and made everything. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know what the walls look like inside, but I guarantee you there's not a true two by four. I'm sure there's a, <laughs> you know, rough cut two by six, two by four, whatever the hell would fit, would fit, you know? Yep. And the acoustics in it were great. And we cut, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. we cut three or four songs of this album in that. I went over to my dad's house. Uh, uh, I was there and said, hey, dad, I really don't have anything else to record. And he said, son, I don't care. It's just us. You know, he, he's an old bachelor himself. And he said, man, turn it up, you know. And, and uh, so we did. We, we, we actually recorded the drums in there. We, we did it. It's, um, you can have a bright room uh, with wood, or you can have one that kind of soaks up. And it, I think the ceilings depend a lot on it. And this one luckily had big enough, tall enough ceilings. And drums, that's ex exceptionally important. You know what I mean? Um, uh, uh, with, with, with the drums, you want enough for the, I guess, it to breathe, as they say. Mm -hmm. And that's what we ended up doing was uh, cutting the drums there for that one. I think Kurt all over again. And there's one other tune that we, oh, oh, sh uh, Shaft, right. the, the, yeah. the, the, uh, the beach tune. And uh, I just, man, that was the sound we were going for, man. You know what I mean? So that was Very it. Cool. Especially this particular one. That reverb, that natural mm -hmm. reverb on mm -hmm. it. I'll tell you, there's, there's not a lot of digital reverb that they did in production. I mean, that was... I remember the guy messaged me, he said, dude, I, I'm going to have to mess up the guitar just to, to make it not sound so damn perfect, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, that, was, that was it, you know, so it was, it was, it was a good, good, good deal. Very, very cool, believe me, I'm, as an engineer, I'm very, very interested in stuff like that, you know what I mean, especially yeah. the environment where you're going to be recording or even just discovering a sound sometimes, it's your environment yeah. that counts as well. We did one in a public toilet simply because... Uh, uh, this is in Auckland, believe me, and it was underneath a motorway, um, and, and across the road from the motorway was actually the district court, but this toilet, and I'm not kidding, all, all these um, men of the night used to go in there, but 
We <laughs> whacked this band in there and recorded it simply because it was all tile and absolutely fantastic sound. You know what I mean? Um, and and yes. then once we got that done, we, we were going to do the video and we, everybody went, well, why don't we go back to the loos? <laughs> it's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> could, it was sort of a George Michael kind of deal, you know what I mean? <laughs> yep. Yeah. It absolutely was, I guarantee it, yes sir. Yeah, wake me up before you go go. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Absolutely. That, that's killer. That's killer. I'm, I'm yeah. going to ask you. We have a. I'm, I'm getting well, like, what do you, what do we got left? Left me, left me with the blues and love you to blues are all gone. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you okay. if you'd consider coming to New Zealand. We're going to go down that road, which will okay, good deal. Yeah. therefore lead into the, um, well, the story about the golf cart kind of security cart thing. Okay. It will explain it. Sure. Sure. I'm, I'm excited about this. I really am. I really am. <laughs> well, I've been sitting there watching Jonathan. He's going, get on with it. I want to know about the golf cart. No, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we'll go do that. Here at Galaxy 107 FM, 9 away from the lunchtime midday, 7.7 .7 degrees, so we'll call it 8 degrees. Kind of weird right now, it went all the way up and then all the way back down again. So, uh, yeah, but having said that, uh, thunder, snow conditions in and around Christchurch could make for a spectacular display of lightning this morning. Enjoy that, I like a bit of Mother Nature getting down, I really do. Uh, as long as you're safe, right? And if you're out and about on the roads and drive to the conditions, you know what to do. Turn your lights on, make it click, get there safely, right? Yeah. Uh, having said that, we're joined today, coming out of North Carolina by, yes, uh, Corey Legend and Jonathan Link from the band, the Travelling Blues Band. And we've been having a little chat about little things behind the scenes. Uh, you'll have to watch the video. Uh, for those of you, by the way, that are going to watch it a little later on over on YouTube, you know what to do, right? Yeah, no, you do. Sub, thumb, bell, bingo. Uh, simply because uh, bell notifications for when we have important people like Corey Lynch and join on us. And, uh, well, it's a <laughs> really pleasure to have him back again. Now, Corey, uh, we've, been talking, here. we've been talking a little bit um, uh, about getting you here in New Zealand. But before I ask you that, I did ask you a fan question about how we get hold of you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and stuff like that. What I negated to ask you was, how do we download your music? Have you got a website? And on your website, do you have a merch store? Talk to them, Johnny. <laughs> this is the guy that takes care of the tech stuff. I just read the song. Talk to them, Johnny. Yeah, so um, it was a couple years back, I guess, we actually got it going. Um, so uh, I do IT work as well, but I'm, I'm not really much of web design kind of deal. But um, Corey's like, what do we need to do? So I'm like, all right, well, we can go this route, get it set up. So uh, we do have a website build out, travelingbluesband.com. Um, that's got all of our links and, and video and, and the whole deal on how to reach us uh, and all that good stuff. Yeah, so. pretty much uh, travelingbluesband.com. Um, and uh, he, he put uh, all of our Spotify links on it. Um, uh, uh, Apple Music, uh, you know, Google Play, all the places that you can normally download music, you can do that. We definitely appreciate that. Of course, um, same deal with you guys. We're on YouTube, so, you know, sub, like, bell, you know the deal. That's absolutely 100% right. So check us out at uh, the Traveling Blues Band. You'll see that cool little band logo there behind us, and, and that's the one. You know, give us that thumbs up, follow us. Um, we've, um, uh, we've had a, a, a pretty big um, upswell of, of people wanting to follow and like us with the release of the uh, Crazy About a Saxophone video. We normally try to cut a... a you know, music videos, they're, they're 
not quite what they were with MTV, I guess, when they actually right. used to play music, you know, 20 <laughs> years ago, whatever it was. But um, they're still kind of a cool little thing, and they're kind of like a, when you got your favorite band, you know, you get to kind of see them and do their thing. So we cut a couple, quote unquote, real music videos um, every year. Um, we have a great director, Mari Kennedy, he does an excellent job for us. But uh, 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 aside from the polished music videos that are that we, we like, we're going to try and promote a song, we at least try to once a month, twice a month. Um, we carry um, GoPros around with us and um, and try to get three, four tight angle shots and live performances. Mm -hmm. And we try to at least update a, a you know throw up a song or, or two a month of the real deal, what you would see at a show, at a Corey Lewis and the Trial Blues Band show. The real solo is the real deal. No editing. This is just the only editing is the video editing. Um, the, there, there's no edits. There's just us playing. So if you're enjoying our sound, that's what you like. Um, you know, we obviously on Spotify and all that good stuff. We just try to sell all our originals, and that's what we want to do. We want to get our music in your ears and in your hands, so to speak. But uh, on the YouTube uh, channel, you'll get a little bit of sneak peek of some of the covers that we end up covering uh, during live shows as well. And uh, you, you'll be able to check them out. And you know, we've we've had a few fans that graciously uh, just you know just love our version the best, and that's always good. And that's the easiest way to get it. Um, so we, you know, we don't really record covers, so to speak, in the studio and do them, at least we haven't yet. Um, but uh, we, we definitely try to put out a few during our show. So I highly suggest the YouTube channel to subscribe and like and, and the bell. Uh, Facebook, uh, The Traveling Blues Band uh, uh, is, is what you're looking for in all your hashtags. And TravelingBluesBand.com will send you to all these places. There's links <laughs> everywhere on that website and pictures of us and all that good stuff. So Very uh, cool. hope, hopefully that will get everybody in the right direction. We'll, we'll get inundated. With, uh, with messages now that everybody has heard this on 107. Yeah, believe uh, me. Galaxy I, FM. I think you are too. Now, do you have a merch store on there? Do you sell koozies and t-shirts and stuff like that as well? All right, so <clears throat> we're we're developing the merch store to be able to streamline that. The easiest way to do it, you can send us a message. Um, and um, either on Facebook or through the website. It comes directly, once again, to this guy right here. Um, you give me the address. We have Venmo, Cash App, and all that good stuff set up. Um, and you know, if you want an extra large t-shirt, you want a koozie, you want a hat, you want a CD, you want a package deal, tell me what you want. I'll give you the price, give us, and we'll mail it to you. And we mean that. I know you, I think you said 201 cities and 75 countries are listening today. We sent stuff to France, yep. to Germany, to the UK, uh, our buddies from down under, how right, right, right. over in Australia. Um, we, which I, I don't want to get the, the New Zealand Aussie thing going, but I'll, uh, I'll, I'll just, Too late. Too late. What I'm trying to tell you is, is that we send it anywhere. We we don't discriminate at all. If, if you're willing to buy it, we will we'll gladly be able to do it. It goes right to me. I go right. I have a post office 12 minutes from my house, and uh, I will make sure I get it in the mail for you. And uh, we will take care of you because uh, we just we we want to get our fans uh, the gear. We got some cool T-shirts and stuff, and uh, maybe I'll even show a few on, on the next break. There we'll have a few and. We got some cool stuff to, to, to be able to give away, so um, and be able to sell. So we definitely want fans to do it, and, and we got to get your size, right? We got to send, send you one uh, for the next interview for sure. I tell you what, I'll get Barbara to send you those, uh, all the details and stuff like that. Believe me, we'd be very, very honoured to uh, wear your brand while I'm doing these interviews. Today, I'm wearing the creatures uh, coming out of uh, awesome. coming out of Canada, and believe me, I absolutely love these guys. I do, and of course. We got the guys coming out of Ireland as well. There you go. Uh, what do you mean? Product placement. Of course. <laughs> of course. It's all, <laughs> it's all about product placement, literally. Uh, and people get on the interwebby thing. Before you know it, you've got another six or seven fans. You know what I mean? Yes. So, <laughs> literally. Yes. Uh, but I'm talking... Well, listen, we've, we've, we've said we try to get them by the tens. I tell you, by the tens. <laughs> well, I, I, I tell you what. I, I'm talking hundreds. That'll work too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I say six or seven, Beautiful. I mean hundreds, literally. Uh, and I'll give you uh, uh, the the amount of people that are online watching this or, or listening to this on the radio after we do it, because no point in giving it to you now. It just grows and grows and grows. You know what I mean? So uh, when we finish this, I'll, I'll let you know how many numbers were on board. Now, having said that, we were discussing about getting you guys down here to the Antipodes, down to the Aotearoa, Land of the Long White Cloud. Uh, now, do you guys know much about New Zealand? 
Well, we know that they have a uh, pretty eccentric DJ that runs a radio station at 107, uh, 107 Galaxy. I, I know that. I know that. Um, and um, I, I'll tell you, we, we do know, the only other part that I know about it is I had a, a girl in my um, middle school class that moved from New Zealand, um, tall, gorgeous, redhead, and, you know, of course, I was in middle school, so back then I was, you know, I, I wouldn't say cooties existed, but then looking back now, my goodness, did I mess up there, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, what was I thinking, you know what I mean? But, uh, but anyways, but, but, uh, but the, the, you know, hindsight is always twenty twenty. But um, I do know that, and uh, I know that they obviously lo love a lot of good music, and I know that we would love to, to get some shows over there to tour over there. Like I was telling you, we're going to do one of these interviews in the studio one day out uh, when we're on our way to uh, um, playing another show. And, you know, so I don't know what promoters are out there or how that all happens. i got to be honest. I've done most of our booking. I use a few agents that, that, that uh, I'm a non-exclusive artist, but... I do most of it, but you, know, you always make me partners, you always make promoters, you always, this is a good band, this is a, a definitely a, a, a top shelf quality band that can you know, perform in front of any crowd anywhere in the world, and we would love to perform live in front of some of the crowds in New Zealand. However, I was warned by one of our, um, uh, fan, uh, I guess, uh, compadres, I'll say, Terry Von Cannon, uh, <clears throat> that uh, if we are going to go to a show and do a show over there, to never ride in the golf cart with you to the show. <laughs> and I'm just curious, DJ Grant, why would that be? <laughs> well, okay, let me put you in on this one. Uh, now, first of all, uh, I've, I've got to let you know that if you're going to come to New Zealand, we're a little crazy here in New Zealand. We kind of are. We're like shenanigans. That, that kind of sums it up, especially for me. I'm, I'm you know, huge, <laughs> huge on shenanigans. I got the right man, then. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Uh, but having said that, have you ever heard of a hoo-hoo grub? A uh, uh, what? A uh, hoo-hoo grub. It's spelled H-U-H-U, -H -U, grub. No, I can't say that I've heard of a hoo-hoo grub. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let me put you in on this Move one. Um, you, you're familiar with a caterpillar, right? Yes. Yeah, this is nothing like it. In fact, um, well, it's big. <laughs> It's white. It's, it's like a double-decker bus to a mini, I've got to be honest with you. And Well, the indigenous folks of New Zealand, the Maori, still today use this as a delicacy. They still eat it, and believe me, I've had my fair share. In fact, I've had so many, I'm starting to like them uh, over the years. Uh, but what they are is a big white bug, and what you do... Now, I, I suggest alcohol. Before, most people try during as well. And uh, we try it. Yeah, right. Uh, check. Yeah. All right, there you go. And yeah. what you do is you put the live body in your mouth, rip off the head, don't eat the head, it's yucky, but when you crunch down on this, it's like eating creamy peanut butter. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Close up on the faces there, right? Yeah, <laughs> believe me. Uh, they're getting I'll, take, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Well, I, I did ask you if you knew much about New Zealand. I'll just buy a jar, man, for like two yeah. bucks. <laughs> I don't know how hard it is to get peanut butter in New Zealand. Here in America, we get you. We'll just, I'll, just, I'll, I'll send you some peanut butter. No, it's, it's all good. We, we have a thing called sanitarium here that makes peanut butter. Uh, that, that's, not, that's not the place where they hold the uh, nutters, by the way. <laughs> it is actually a company called sanitarium. Um, oh. But I was telling you a bit about New Zealand, and we're made yep. up of three islands. Right down the very bottom, we have an island called Stewart Island. It's the only part of New Zealand that actually got a name. Literally. I mean, whoever named New Zealand, besides being Aotearoa, the land of the long white cloud, um, Stewart is a good, healthy name. They ran out of imagination. They really did, because they called the next island South. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> then guess what followed that? North. I mean, North. yeah, um, logical, right? Surely they could have given it something better, like maybe called it Russell or Bob or John or, you know, something other than Anything. South and North. Gosh, you know, but, well, <laughs> down the west coast of the South Island is a little place called Hukatika, and they have a wild food festivals down there. Uh, now, you're familiar with festivals, you know, kids wandering around, candy floss, hot dogs on a stick, stuff like that. Yeah, not there. 
Yeah. Literally, it's wild food. <laughs> you might see kids wandering around with a deep fried locust or something on a stick. You know what I mean? Oh. <laughs> Real wild. I mean, mountain oysters. Mm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the menu. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Sheep's tails. Now, sheep's tails, yeah, tr pigs try to... Uh, the thing is, I've been trying to talk to this management of these guys down there for almost 20 years now. I says, you know, why don't you just set up a, you know, a little tent there where you can dip women in chocolate? <laughs> I would buy a ticket for that. Uh, all day eating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, Terry Van Cannon says, I think the grub story is making Jonathan sick. He's changed four different yeah. colours. He's gone through a gang of so, colours. So, so with all these bugs in all this, North, East, South and Stewart, talk about this golf cart. <laughs> we're, 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 we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, that's right. We're getting there. We're getting there. But first of all... I want answers. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're getting there. Uh, because we've got to head down the South Island before we come back up. Uh, but have you ever heard of Queenstown? Um, I have not, but I have now. Okay, well, not calling it Queensland. That's in Australia. Uh, basically, the place where all the men wear dresses and high heels, drive fast in women's clothes called drag racing. Uh, that's Queensland. <laughs> but Queenstown, now, Queenstown is a little boutique kind of town come city. Uh, the, where all the A-listers from around the world go to get away from the paparazzi, maybe the missus, you never know uh, what they're down there for, but believe me, a lot of the A-listers go there, and you never know who you might run into. Uh, Shania Twain owns property down there. Uh, Tom Cruise was down there before the pandemic. Same with uh, Kevin Costner, Keanu Reeves, they, you know, the A-listers. Anyway, uh, but you don't want to run into me down there. <laughs> you don't. No, no, you don't. Because, um, well, literally, Corey, I'll throw you off. A, I'll throw you off a bridge. Is that right? Is, is that is that is that? Stunned silence. Now, so I take it one one four wheel golf cart, one bad driver. Sideways four wheels, how do I know? Is that how it's basically the... the... Yeah, you're getting close. Well, you know, uh, down, in Queens, <laughs> down in Queenstown, a good friend of mine who introduced the sport to New Zealand, bungee jumping, is down there. Mm -hmm. Now, I said, well, crazy, you got to, you know, get the ticket going, right? Yep, yep. So, well, you're not Australian, we'll attach the bungee. <laughs> <laughs> Very cautious. Uh, but having, having said that, while we're down there, we'll take you on a um, super jet boat ride down the um, uh, down the river down there. Believe me, you will absolutely so love it. Down the shot over. Those guys are nuts. They turn these super boats inside out, upside down, all around. And I promise you, you won't spill a drop of your beer. Well, as long as that's the case, we're, 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 we're okay. Because nah. that's the only way we boat here in America is with plenty of beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you know, I actually had one American say to me, how can you not drop a drop of your beer? I said, let's bro. <laughs> <laughs> We're up with the plane. We put lids on the things first. But believe me, a lot of fun. Now let's get to the golf cart. Um, are, are you familiar with Lord of the Rings? Yes, I am, yes. Okay, well, Peter Jackson is actually uh, somebody I went to school with back in the day at university. And believe me, you should see some of his earlier movies. Uh, I'll give you a list of them <laughs> later on. Mm, very funny. Uh, but he managed to get this movie, J.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. Now, about an hour and a half away from where we are right now is actually Middle Earth, the original set of Hobbiton. You know, we can go there. Matter, matter. Uh, it does matter and matter, matter. Uh, we can go there, show you around. Now, as you may be able to gather, uh, the staff will have to take you in because I'm not allowed back in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Something happened and, well, mysteriously, one of their security golf carts went missing, ended up in the middle of Lake Rotorua. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, hypothetically, what, what do you think happened uh, to this golf cart? Hypothetically, and you're a detective, Sherlock Holmes. Uh, if, if that was you, what, what would you imagine had happened? 
I attached it to a helicopter and flew it out. <laughs> <laughs> he did. The guy was in it at the time to start with, but believe me, he got a couple of feet off the ground and bailed real quick. Don't, don't. <laughs> Well, then you're all right. You know, I'll tell you, Terry is right. I will not be in a uh, golf cart around or near you, just period. <laughs> As well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Looks like whether we're in Stewart, North, East, South, or West, you are not safe. If you're in a golf cart around these area. Believe me, it's um, come back to haunt me a number of times that one, I've got to be honest with you. But, yeah, well, you know, if you're going to come to New Zealand, all I can say is if you're going to hook up with me, bail money. Gotcha, yes. <laughs> yes. We got good lawyers, we got money plenty up. of good lawyers, but bail money, just in case. You know, a little something, something in the back pocket, just in case, because you never know what might happen. Uh, and, and believe me, as I said to you, you know, it's all about challenging yourself and uh, getting a ticker going every day. If you're not, you know. Ticker going. Have you ever heard of a Zor? Uh, uh, of a what? Zor. Z O R B. No. no, I have not heard of his order. Okay, well, this is fun. Believe me, you're going to love this one. Plenty, plenty of alcohol involved. Uh, most people, again, before, during, and after. Uh, during is more challenging because it's a big, clear, round ball. And what we do is we put you in the middle of it and roll you down a hill. Oh, okay. That's what yeah, a yeah, 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 I didn't know that's what they're actually called. But yeah, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, I'll learn me something new today. Right. There we go. Uh, us Kiwis are a little different. You know, as I said, alcohol, we put runners in front of you to be able to hit it. It's like moving Skittles. You know what I mean? Now, <laughs> the, the reason why I say alcohol is, well, you know, the looks on their faces as you go over top of them, priceless. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. So yes. These are the things you got to look forward to, Jonathan, believe me. <laughs> These are the things you got to look forward to if you're coming to New Zealand to um, have some fun with us. Now, we're kind of thinking, you know, as I mentioned... We would love to, you, to be able to do so. We, we would love to be able to do that and be able to do it under the guise of going and playing music. So I would, you know, hopefully uh, you guys open up for business. That'll be... Uh, That'll be a, a tourist out next year for sure. Well, I, I'm kind of thinking, you know, the Corey Luch and the, uh, uh, the Dale Coles, the uh, Bob Margulins, the Terry Van Cannons, the uh, Matt Walshers, and Smitty. bring them and Smitty and the Jump Stars bring you all over for one huge North Carolinian festival here in New Zealand. You know, we'll do a couple of shows, one in the north, one in the south. We'll forget about Stuart. It will sink with that many people anyway. <laughs> Then we'll take it over to Australia. What do you reckon? Uh, I, I, if we can make that all work, we would love to be it. You just show me the uh, plane i got to be on. Brilliant. We are in the plane. Believe me, even though we are doing this COVID virus thing, we're not sitting on our hands. We're making plans. We're getting ready. We do have the staff. Even though, believe me, we sympathise with everybody as far as money goes, we're not sitting here thinking, OK, well, it's us. Let's... Be ready for that day when the government says, go for it. You know what I mean? And believe me, we're backing yes, them up absolutely. right now. We really are. So, tell me, guys, have you left me with the blues? <laughs> well, we won't leave you with the blues. We will definitely come over there and not leave, leave your blue doing it. If we get the invite, we'll definitely be able to, be able, be able to go do it. Uh, I'll tell you, this, this song here, um, this is one... That is one of those interesting tunes. You know, when we cut it, we never thought it would get as much radio play as it mm -hmm. did. You know, this was, we just wanted a Greg Almondy sounding blues tune that wasn't 12 bars, but was, you know, or at least I wanted, you know. And and um, and then, in fact, this was the, the one song that I just kind of said, you know, we don't, we don't even need you over here. Like, <laughs> I, I'm going to do the solo. I'm going to do the pitch. I want to go, go, play guitar on it. And... Um, you know, and, and, and I'll be darned if not every radio station that I send our album to, this doesn't somehow whittle its way onto their rotation. And um, so every once in a while, you know, there's certain ones that you write that, you know, you sit there and say, that's a good one. You know, uh, uh, you know, Samuel Blues was one. I think in the first one, the, the first interview we had, I don't think, uh, it's not today, but uh, you played Stop. That's probably my favorite one off the album. I absolutely love the song Stop. You know, when I wrote it, I said, man, man this, this got some, some juice. It's got some mojo, you know? Um, 
it, this was one that we really liked that we just that but we didn't realize it had as much juice and mojo as it as it does you know so the fact that it's um, um sometimes you get a little hidden gem in there uh i call it panda for gold call it whatever you want but uh, uh we, we, we kind of with a little gold nugget here and people seem to really enjoy this one so hopefully they enjoy it now well i tell you Corey, i think i told you the last time this is your most requested song and it hasn't stopped it is snowballing like crazy here at galaxy i find it difficult to get through a breakfast show without at least playing let me with the blues here at Galaxy every morning. So you're right here. Let's do it. Let me with the blues. Hey, check this out. I'll tell you, really, what, 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 when we put this one on the album, Grant, I didn't think, I mean, I, I just, I was like, well, this is the one that's going to be, people are going to think is the filler song. You know, it's the one I like, but, you know, there's, and, and when we record, we, we cut the ones we like. I mean, that that's all there is to it. We don't, this is us. Hopefully you enjoy them. If you don't, you don't. But, you know, like some of them, you just, like saxophone, that, we thought that was marketable. We, we you know, we, there's Stop, man. That, stop is one of those tunes that I, man, that's, whew, that's a heart heavy hitter right there. Uh, you left me with the blues if you're into that. This was one I was like, this is a good song. I just don't know what's going to happen with it. And I'll be darned if this one isn't really starting to kick off pretty good for us, you know? We were going to play Stop, but we substituted it, of course, for your new release that we're going to be doing next. So, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I completely understand it. And that's fun. You know, and I figure you swap out the new release for this one. And I have no idea that this was the most requested one that we had. So that was kind of an interesting little deal, you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, very cool. I mean, you know, hey, listen, that hopefully... Hopefully we'll catch enough ears that they check out our stuff and get stopped and do all the other deal anyways. <laughs> well, and hopefully it's in your rotation every once in a while. And as long as we do all those things, then it'll take care of itself. Well, believe me. And, and tonight is actually Blues Night, and you're featuring in that as well. But um, you're up oh, clo sweet. close to 1,900 requests for it. For uh, Lucky With The Blues? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, literally. Wow. You're, you're up That's there. Astonishing. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's, it's just an amazing thing, you know. <laughs> so, you know, like I was telling you, you go, you, you go through cycles, right? like you write it and you think, man, that's a pretty good tune, I want to cut it. Then you go from, who the hell would listen to this? And then you go to, there's 1,900 people requesting, you know what I mean? Well, apparently 1,900 people want to listen to it, you know what I mean? And so it's just kind of one of those funny things, you know what I mean? You know, as, a, as an artist, that you, that you the uh, progressions of it, I guess, you know what I mean? Believe me, bro, since, since we've been playing it, it has just a mess of following, it really has. Um, I, I, I said earlier on that Dale Hammond was uh, joining us, and it's an absolute pleasure to have Dale joining us, literally. Um, <clears throat> Anthony Liguri is our, our resident yes. Elvis. Do we have any questions? Yeah. And, and he's our, one more time. Anthony Liguri is our resident Elvis and has toured with, oh, the, okay. with the Hammond brothers. Uh, I was having a, an interview with him not so long ago, and he, I, I noted that he had some really nice jewelry on right and i i was looking at the turquoise because that's my birthstone right Thank and he says right yep. don't worry about it i'll send you a couple so um and he's got a part native american in him as well you know what i mean so it suited him yep, 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 yep. and when he sent them to me i opened up the bag and thought holy fuck excuse my language he sent me some bracelets with his teeth on them. <laughs> right? I thought Whoa. that was, But do you know what they are? Little skulls. Oh. Yeah. But the skulls. Holy smokes. And I, when I opened up the bag, I went, oh my God, it's his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> so, Anthony. Way too personal. Yeah. That is too yep. cool. But uh, luckily, it was just a, just designed. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes. Couple yes. of teeth. Anyway, let's go back to the desk. <laughs> That's right, you're right here at Galaxy 107 FM, 19 after 12 o'clock and 9 degrees. It's weird right now, it's going up and down like a lift, it really is. Uh, Tuesday, June 29th, and I'm absolutely elated to be joined by Corey Luchin and of course Jonathan Link from the band 
the Travelling Blues Band. Now, we're going to be doing a release very, very shortly, but uh, I must apologise to you guys on Facebook. Uh, I said an F-bomb word, and I'll put somebody's money in the jail later. Not mine. <laughs> I'll, I'll find somebody's wallet and put a money in it. Don't worry. Anyway, having <laughs> said that, uh, Corey, I'm absolutely, I've got to ask you yes. about your uh, logo in the background there. Who created that? Okay, so actually, I'm glad you uh, glad you mentioned it. Uh, so, typically, a lot of times in this band, um, what you end up having is me with an idea, and then hiring out people much more talented than me to carry out the idea. That is it. I was just wanted to put my name on the logo. That's why it's Core Lucian Travel Blues Band. I hired players far better than me, and we, we, we keep doing it. So, in this particular case, it is Rich Powell. Um, I went and I gave him this sketch. I said, man, I want like this VW bus thing, with, but I want, you know, guitars and, and, and microphones and all that good stuff. So he ended up um, sketching it. In fact, right at the, the very bottom of, it, of every one, I kept his, I kept his artist signature. You know, I had the option to get rid of it, but I, I like giving credit where credit's due. Um, and we did it, and I'll tell you, we had some, as promised, you know, we have a bunch of T-shirts. I don't know if you got a good look at them there. Um, we got these in the baseball style and, and whatnot there. The, the grill of the van is a microphone. We got the guitar on top. We, he really did a lot of, a lot of the details uh, that we do there. And, um, we have a few of the koozies and all that good stuff with them on there, little can huggers that you can check out. We got hats. We got all, all the good stuff. Um, like I said, if anybody's interested in any of it, just message us. We'll, we'll get them to you. And, um, and, uh, you know, we, we just... It was just one of those cool logos. We actually had a guitar logo as well. We use it as an alternate logo. It's actually on the album. You um, on the website. Uh, it, 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 it's on the website as well. Um, that, that you know, it's kind of like every band has at least an alternate logo. So we use that one a lot as well. But nothing beats the the band logo. Just something about it is really cool. Um, our band van itself, it is a white band van. It doesn't look <laughs> quite as cool as that one. It is an old road warrior. It's a uh, it's an old one Dodge van. Uh, old one Dodge, yeah. And uh, and the motor's been replaced on it a couple times. Uh, thanks to my brother and and and, uh, and father who own a shop. Uh, you know, we we put roughly uh, thirty five to forty thousand miles a year on that vehicle, and uh, it gets us to and from. It's the easiest way to haul four or five guys and all that equipment. And, I'll be darned that 318 just uh something about that that Detroit steel it just uh seems to get us to everywhere we need to go you know so so uh this is definitely the uh you know how like in um in Hollywood you know you have the real guy and then you have an actor actually play him you know so you know for me you know I, um it would be Chris Pratt would play me a much better looking version of me you know something like that right that's exactly what this is this is a much this is the Hollywood version of the real band band uh, for us to uh, go to and from shows. I was actually going to ask you if it was a combi and whether you had a real combi yourself, uh, but you answered the question. You really, really did. Thank you very much for that. And uh, believe me, absolutely love, love, love in the artwork. I really am. It stands out. It's absolutely eye-catching, purposeful works. It really does. So uh, keep an eye out for that logo and you'll know you're in for a good show. You literally will. Uh, by the way, go to Galaxy Artists, keep an eye out there because Corey does advertise in there. He lets us know what he's doing, when he's doing it, and how he's doing it, and what colour underpants he's wearing at the time. So, you know, you can only bonus on that one. You really can. In the meantime, we only got this. It is brand new. I think we got it late last night, early this morning. Uh, the yep. uh, team came in, worked on it, put it into the playlist. I've only heard it very, very marginally this morning. I really have. I haven't heard all of it. So I'm excited about this. Brand spanking new song, Love You Till You... Uh, sorry, let me get this right. Love You Till Your Blues Are All Gone. <laughs> I, I hired these eyes. You okay? All right? So, you know, the second... <laughs> it's hard to find good help, Brandon. Yeah, it is. Yeah, help. it is. You know, you go down the road, you need a brand new pair of eyes, have them highly polished, all that. Still don't work well. Love you till your blues are gone. Tell me all about this, because uh, what I've heard of it really twigged my imagination. Well, yeah, so one of those deals, again, we were going to uh, Memphis. Yeah. And, um, it, you know, COVID really, I, obviously, it shut the world down. It really has put a 
pause stopgap in what we were doing. I mean, you know, we, so I, I told you we, 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 we won the 2007 TP Mutt Blues. Then in 2019, you can't win the same Blues Society's competition within three years. It's in their bylaws or whatever. So we had to go to the Triangle Blues Society, which is an, two hours in the other direction, to go compete in that one. Well, we went and we ended up winning that one. Um, so we wanted some new material. We wanted another rocker. Um, kind of type deal, and I'm, I'm a stick, I just love a bl good blues box shuffle, I just mm -hmm. love playing guitar on it, I just, it, it's my cup of tea, um, and um, I'm heavily influenced by the Allman Brothers, and, and Clapton, and Stevie Ray, and all those those normal cats, and this one here, um, they're, they're, then there were local cats that really influenced me, Chris Carroll was a huge influence, That's, this bass line is a direct ripoff of every Tuesday night jam, Monday night jam, Thursday night jam I'd ever play with Chris Carroll. He'd play one of these a night. Just it, the, the words were different every time, but it didn't matter. It was, hey, box shuffle out of C, you know, and we, we'd just go. And and guys like Terry Von Cannon were there, and Big Bump, and, and Sheila, and you know, all these great blues players that, you know, when I first started out 15, 16 years old, you know, they 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 they'd play a lick and you'd go out to the show and hey man, how'd you do that and they take the time and they show me and it was their jams they hosted it so I literally grew up with these guys helping me teaching me you know, stealing every lick I could this song is a culmination of my blues roots that I absolutely love I mean we we can rock some we do some kind of the, what they call the Carolina beach music stuff yes. we, we we we're cross genre. But at the root, at our backbone, we are a blues band. Corey Luchin and the Traveling Blues Band, it is as advertised. We are a traveling blues band. We do, if it pays, we play. I mean, we travel and we play the blues. And this is really down to our roots. Uh, we wanted a rocker for Memphis. We went and did it. We actually shot a music video with this one. It's on our YouTube channel. And it actually encompasses our entire Memphis experience that year. Um, it was a, which was January 2020. We left there on cloud nine. We made it to the semifinals. We, we, we met a lot of people, took pictures of Walker Trout, Mr. Sit, um, you know, shook hands, met all these guys, traded cards. You know, they were coming up to us, hey, you cats sound good, that type of thing. And then in March, the world stopped, as we all know it. So, with that being said, we now want to jump start it. So, we, we, we made this video, we've done it. You can check us out, and um, you know. We are definitely that blues cup of tea, and if that's your cup of tea, you're really going to like this one. Absolutely fantastic, and believe me, I am loving this. Corey Luchin and the Travelling Blues Band, here is Love You Till Your Blues Are All Gone. <laughs> Yeah, we got the AC off on this one, so I know we keep taking on. We're in the same boat we are, you know. We, yeah, we, we just we got the AC off on this side of the house, and we're, and we're drinking scotch, so you tell me if it's hot or not. I, I used to have a young blonde 18-year-old that used to fan me, but mysteriously, she went missing, and the wife took over, and, well, it's just not the same anymore. It, it never does work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never works out quite the same. Yes, yes. Oh, dear. It wasn't a golf cart, was it? Uh, no, but she might have ended up with it by the sound of it. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Okay, we, um, you know, okay, we, we, we've, uh, th this has been a fun little interview process. It, it's actually worked out really cool for us that, you know, obviously being able to plug saxophone and great cross section of our tunes. And, yeah. and uh, we just, uh, again, I, I can't say it enough, man, we really do appreciate you guys having us. And, and uh, you know, we, uh, we, hopefully one of these days it, it'll be one of those gnarly things where we're able to go over and actually play New Zealand and jump in and be in the studio and, and this is uh, yeah, not a pipe dream but a real deal. We, we would love to do it and we're very serious about it. Well, we are very serious as well. We would love to have you here. We love your work, Corey. We really, really do. Um, as an engineer, literally, I can't fault your work. I don't listen to it as a fan would listen to it. I listen to it as yeah. a DJ for commercial value, as an engineer for you know how it's broken down literally like that so believe me and i've been in the game almost 40 years toured with some pretty big names in the world literally a couple of them coming out of australia those guys can't get past four letters literally you know <laughs> one, of them's, one of them's actually got a lightning bolt in it ingenious 
<laughs> That's really, and in fact, the drummer lives about an hour and a half away from me right now. Um, but I've toured with some huge bands over the years, worked with some very big bands as a front of house, as a studio engineer as well. And, you know, when I hear music like yours, Corey, it just gives me a little bit of faith that the music industry is in safe hands. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That's a that's an incredible compliment. You know, it's something we work very hard at. It's, it's uh, something we take very seriously. I mean, we have a blast doing it. Obviously, this is the fun stuff, right? Yeah. But the, um, the, the 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 writing, the recording, the getting it right, the in and out. You know, nobody understands how hot a studio is. I don't think because you know you never have the ACs. You can't turn them on. Right. The lights pick them up. You know, you're always sweating in a damn studio. You know, and all those things. And, um, but I really appreciate it. I know you listen to a lot of music and a lot of tracks, and that means a lot coming from you, DJ. Great Absolutely. visuals. Thanks a lot, buddy. Well, believe me, bro. And, really hell, do. you're all the way from the other side of the world. So, I mean, if you like it from there, I mean, <laughs> Well, to, to be honest, it's a small world. We're in 70 odd different countries. You know, it doesn't get much smaller than that these days, does it? That's a fact. That's a fact. Yes, sir. Let's go back to this. We'll wind this up, but please don't go anywhere just yet because we're going to do a couple of crazy things yep. afterwards. Okay, bro? You know, these guys perform about 250 shows a year uh, prior to the uh, COVID virus. That's a busy schedule, it really is. Uh, three places, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Virginia. Well, just the backyard, actually. What, you're scared to move out? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'll tell you right now, you know, we, we are what I would call a regional band, but we, like I said, Vip Pays, we play. I mean, if they, if, if, if you know, if, new, if we can go to New Zealand, I'm, telling, I'm on the next plane uh, over there. Uh, we go all over the place. Of course, I could not uh, thank the guys enough. Uh, and, and again, their wives and that, that, that put up with the incredible, crazy tour schedule. I'll tell you, I think we're back to close to four nights a week, four to five nights a week for the rest of the year. I guess got some, some more shows this week that uh, we'll be doing. Uh, just give a quick rundown of everybody. Obviously, I'm, I'm Corey Lucci, and I'm the guy, John Link on sax. Um, we have Rob Dohanty on bass now, uh, uh, Glenn Bickle on keys and organ, and Todd Grubb has been uh, doing a great job on, on drums. Some of the guys on the recording, just to give shout-outs, um, you know, bands always change. We, we all stay friends with Dion McNeil was on drums on some of those, Will Petty on bass. Um, all those guys make it possible. We have what we like to call members at large that, you know, we played with for so long. When you play 250, 300 shows a year, uh, you need to borrow a guy from a band here and there and guys like that. And those are the guys that make it. Patrick Harrison, I'll give him a shout out as well. Um, all those guys make this whole traveling blues band possible that keep it a very uh, 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 A-plus effort, a five-star show. Um, and uh, I cannot thank those guys enough uh, for their time and commitment and travel. You know, we have a blast on stage, DJ Grant. We have a, a blast having interviews with you guys, and, and all that part of it is fun. We love it. We love it. But when you do it at this level where you're somewhere in between the tour bus and jumping on the private jet, and you're, you're literally still driving yourself to the show and running your Facebook and, and social media and, and, and writing your songs, recording your songs. When you're doing it all, when you, you, you're not to the, then, then it, it is a taxing, busy, you have to be a driven person to be able to do it. You have to, it's a taxing thing. There is a lot of hard work that people don't see. I mean, that, um, that you know, over the summer here in, in, in the southern states when we're doing festivals, they don't see that we bring three sets of clothes, one for setting up, <laughs> one for the show, and one to put on when we get done tearing down because they're all literally wringing wet with sweat. You know, uh, they see the four-hour show or the three-hour show or the two-hour show, or whatever it is that we do, and, and that's great. And we have a blast doing that, and, and that's excellent. But, you know, there's there, there, and there, there's people that work far harder than me, you know, that uh, believe me. But I, I just know that, you know, when you're at this point in, in our careers where we're doing it, 
Uh, we have a blast doing this. We really enjoy it. We love doing it. We're humbled and honored to be able to do this for a living. I know that it's, you know, opportunity, luck looks a lot like preparation and opportunity when they come together, you know, and, and we, we work hard. We try to be prepared. We try to sound good. We, we really try to put our best foot forward. We don't ever try to do anything, you know, uh, uh, halfway. We, you know, it's always a, a, a full deal. And um, we just cannot thank you guys enough uh, for giving us the exposure and the stage and the platform to meet uh, so many of your listeners. Hopefully at the end of this, we have several uh, new Corey Lucci and the Traveling Blues Band fans and uh, from all around the world. And, and we just want to uh, humbly thank you guys for uh, having us be your guest uh, this morning. Absolute pleasure, Corey. It really is. And let's not forget Dwight Martin as well, your harmonica player. And uh, I reckon he does a great job, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, uh, speaking of members at large, and I hate that I, I forgot to, to mention him because uh, we didn't play it here, but Suitcases, that is a requested yeah. song we get a lot as well. And, man, it, when we recorded that. I said, this needs a harmonica. Yeah. This, you know, it didn't need sax. It didn't need me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needed a harmonica. And, like, by the grace of God, <laughs> on a Tuesday night jam that I, that I was just at, this harmonica player comes in, he had a suitcase, and he opened it up, and it, and, it, and it had every key there was, and he was killer, and I said, what are you doing tomorrow, and then I grabbed him, put him in the studio, and he blew up, Dwight Martin is actually a, a, an excellent member at large, uh, Earl Austin on keys, I've been blessed to play with so many great players, um, and I was just lucky enough or smart enough, I'll call it smart, I'll make myself look good, <laughs> that I was just, that I put my name on the top of the banner because really it's, it is Corey Luchin and, and there's, there's a lot I do to make it work and on the business side of it and the booking all that, but it's the traveling blues band. It's those cats behind me that make the band the wall of sound it is and I'm very fortunate to be able to play with a lot of great players. You know, I am so honored to have you as a friend, my friend. I really am. <clears throat> But I will wrap it up right now. Just going to ask you one more question. <clears throat> will yes, you, sir. Will you come back again? Will you release more music with us in the near future? Absolutely. In fact, we're uh, in the midst of recording another album now. Um, very excited about it. Putting uh, We're kind of to the dot in the I's and crossing the T's phase of it. Um, which is, uh, so hopefully within the next few months or so, we'll be able to get a release date, get you guys some music. Hopefully set up another one of these fun interviews with you guys. Absolutely stunning, my friend. I absolutely got to say to you, welcome to the Galaxy family. Jonathan, you talk too much. Uh, but in the meantime, guys, <laughs> yeah, let's wrap it up for now. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You try that. Uh, believe me, we'd love to be able to hear more of you. Uh, and maybe meet more of the band as we go through uh, with your careers as well, you know, down the track. So we'll be able to have a look at that. Uh, but in the meantime, folks, we'd better wrap it up for now. I'm being told we're going a little over time. So thank you so much for joining us on Facebook Live. If you're going to watch a little over there on YouTube, you do know what to do. Sub, thumb, bell, bingo. Have a very happy and prosperous day. See you next time we do an interview. Catch you there. Uh, Corey, don't go anywhere just yet. But in the meantime, let's go over to the other studio. Here's Frank Thiel. And I remember you. So I bought this guitar the other day, so I have the blue one, it has like the, the single chorus, but this one has humbuckers in it, okay? So it's a humbucker.
a telephone Even her ringtone Is a saxophone Said my baby 